Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 55. And this week, we're going to retouch one more of my holiday pictures from Devon. We're going to take this out of camera landscape picture and with a few sliders, turn it into this picture here. Plus, at the end, I've got a few extra little workflow tips and tricks for you. Okay, so this video kind of carries on from the one that I showed you last week in episode 54 when I retouched that early morning sunrise picture when I was down on holiday in Devon. This is a picture again from that holiday and I want to kind of show you what I did to this one to completely transform it. In literally, I reckon, in under one minute we can do this. But because it would be such a short video, I'll kind of tag on maybe a nod, couple of extra little tips and tricks at the very, very end. But first of all, then, let's have a look at how we'll I would approach retouching this image here, which ordinarily you'd probably think was a throwaway image. It looks like there's nothing there, not worth keeping. It's, you know, the shadows, it's too dark, there's no detail in the sky. But this is the magic now, or rather the power of using a raw file now in all these raw converters like we've got here with Lightroom. What information we can bring out is quite astounding. So first of all, let's give ourselves a bit of workspace. I'm going to press Shift and Tab to get rid of all the panels. Come over to the right hand side and just click on that panel there. So I've only got that one on display. I've got a lot more work area now. So when I look at this picture, there's two things that I want to do to it. I want information in the sky and I also want some information in the shadow areas, the darker bushes that we've got here. There must be something we can bring out in there. So let's have a look at the sky first of all. I'm going to take the highlight slider and drag that to the minus. And straight away, we can see there's information there. If I just take that back to what it was, ordinarily, you'd think that's not, not worth keeping. We can come to the top right-hand um, top right -hand corner of the screen here. We've got the histogram. And we can click on the highlight warning. And we can see that we're getting this red color now showing up, showing we've got blown out information there. And you'd probably think that ah, it's just not worth keeping. But let's just turn that off and again bring down now the highlight slider. We can see that we've got information in the sky and that really bright area is actually good to keep in the image because that's where the sun is just peeking through those clouds there and we can see when we zoom in whoops we can see when we zoom in we've got all these kind of like sun rays uh, sun beams coming down as well so that's the sky let's have a look at the foreground now can we do anything with the foreground is there any information in there well I'm going to grab the shadow slider and bring that over to the right hand side just a little bit and a little bit more until it's kind of where I want it to be and straight away we can see there's a lot of information being brought out in there we can now see what's going on in this picture we can see that we've got this lake we've got the bushes we've got like a little bit of an island going on in the center of the picture there a lot more information has been brought out now obviously we brightened up the shadow areas those areas there if i just take that back to how it was were really quite dark and going back not that long ago now you might think that that would be something you wouldn't dare do because of all the noise that you're introducing but you know technology is really advancing these days certainly with all the modern day sensors that are in our cameras and the noise nowadays when we're doing this and we're in brightening up shadow areas is negligible and you've got to think when you look at this picture are you really going to be looking at it with your nose pressed against the screen or with your face planted against the wall when you're looking at it you're not now i look at this picture here the noise level is negligible and this is using uh, my new fuji xt1 but moving on, the next thing I'm going to do, that's only two sliders we've moved so far. The next thing I'm going to do is the color. Now, I explained last week that I don't tend to use the saturation if I can avoid it, because that's just a little bit too hard. I much prefer to use vibrance. Vibrance tends to look at the whole picture. It looks at what colors are in there, and it can see what colors are dominant and what colors are kind of lagging behind. And when we move the slider the, to the right-hand side into the pluses, the first thing it does is it works on the colors that are lagging behind and brings those up to kind of match the level, if you like, of the other colors in the picture that were dominant. So they're all down on a level, pe uh, level peg. And then we can move it across the right-hand side so they all now increase at the same amount at the same level. So nothing is looking a little bit overdone, if you know what I mean. So we can go straight across. So let's go to around about plus 80-ish, something like that. So already, that's only three sliders that we've moved. And if I do it before by pressing the backslash key and after, we can see the difference that's made. What was or could have been considered a throwaway image is really starting to come into something. Now, I, you know, if you followed the kind of work that I do, I don't tend to go for images that are really kind of saturated like this one, 
but this is purely to show you, whoops, purely to show you what you can do, okay? This isn't kind of like the image I'd maybe have in a portfolio. It's purely to show you what we can do with just a few sliders and very, very quickly when we're using raw imagery. Okay, so the next thing I'd want to do here then, let's have a look. Let's, uh, well, we can go for a crop. So I'm going to press R on my keyboard just to bring up the crop handles. And I'll just drag it up just a touch so it just gets rid of these reeds at the bottom down there. And then we'll have a look at the noise. Let's zoom in. Press the space bar and zoom in. And you can hopefully see this on your screen. But the noise really is negligible. This was around about 9.30 in the evening. So it was quite dark. And it was a real throwaway kind of just a grab shot as we were walking back from the lake back towards the cottage we were staying in. So there was nothing planned about this. It was literally a quick shot. And it's amazing the kind of stuff you can get, uh, capture these days. So I might sort of, uh, let's do a little bit of, uh, get to the detail tab, and I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening. There's a little bit of noise in there, but I'm going to bring the sharpening up anyway. I'll probably take that to around about, you know, mid-70s, something like that. I don't want it to sharpen the sky, so I'm going to press the space bar and zoom out. And then I can use that masking slide that we talked about last time just down here in the, in the sharpening. So I'm going to hold down my Alt or my Option key click on the masking slider and drag over to the right and as we do that black areas are introduced and those are the areas where the sharpening isn't being applied which in this case is going to be the sky so we'll go all the way across to around about there is looking good zoom back in again and i might just do a little bit of noise reduction not that it really needs it i'm going to probably take this to around about 20 something like that'll be fine Okay, the next thing we can do, let's have a look to see if there's any kind of dust specks on the picture. So we'll go to the spot removal tool over there. And in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, we've got the visualize spots. So we'll just click on that and we get this kind of black and white view of our image. So we can see here straight away any areas that are really kind of standing out in the sky area that are likely to be dust specks. And we can move the slider back to the left or to the right, depending on how hard we want Lightroom to look at the picture for dust specks. But straight away, we can see there's these two just in the top here. So using it set to heal over on the right hand side, I'll just paint over that one and paint over that one. And there's one just here over on the right hand side, get rid of that one as well. Bring my cursor out to remove those overlays. You can see it's done a pretty good job of getting rid of those and we'll turn off the visualized spots. That's always something that's worth doing as well. Turn it on and off before you do remove any spots, just in case the area you're actually removing isn't a spot and it's part of your picture. So we'll go for something like that. There we go, I'm quite happy with there. And maybe the last thing we'll do then is just go to the radial filter and we'll just add a little bit of a vignette. So we'll drag outwards right outside to get these boundaries outside. Can't quite manage it like there. So I'll click on the middle and drag it over to the right hand side and drag on that handle to the left as well. Something like that. Okay, actually just one little thing when you're using the radial uh, filter here, you can actually move the sliders independent or these points independently. If you hold down your alter option key and click on, let's say, the one over on the left hand side, that one will move in, leaving the one on the right hand side in the same position. So that's quite a handy little thing to know there. So we'll drag that into the middle and we'll just bring the exposure down as well something like that and come out the radio filter. So just to do a very, very quick before and after, if I haven't been talking, this is probably something you could do in under a minute. In fact, that's just a little bit too dark. Let's just click back on that radio filter and bring that up just a touch, something like that. So a before and after, which could have literally taken under a minute, something like that. But that's the retouching side of it. The extra little thing I wanted to show you was to do with before and afters. Now in Lightroom, in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, when we're using the develop module, see down here, whoops, not the film view, just these little icons in the bottom left here, this is where we can do before and after. And we've got a load of different choices when we click on them like this, and it kind of rotates through different views, like whatever you like this here. You've also got a little uh, arrow here where we can choose from a menu of choices whatever we want to have. But each time you click on it, it kind of rotates through all the different before and after views. And that's really, really handy. So let's just click on the one on the far left to take it to the back to our picture. But I want to also show you a couple of other ways that you can do it, because you might not be using Lightroom. You might be using Camera Raw. So let's just send the picture here. Let's go to Photo, Edit In. And I'm going to choose Open as a Smart Object in Photoshop, something I 99.9% .9 of the times I do. So I've always got access to the retouching I've done, working non-destructively. So we'll click on that there. That's going to send this image now over into Photoshop CC or whatever version of Photoshop you're using. But it's going to uh, uh, sort of send it over to there as a smart object so that I can, if I want to, once it appears in the Photoshop, 
double click on the thumbnail thumbnail in the layers panel and it'll take it back into camera raw and we can see that all those adjustments we did in Lightroom are here in camera raw as well so we can change them now in the updated versions of camera raw we've also got previews of the before and after being added in here and you find those in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and they give us the same options of what we had in Lightroom so if I click down here the little pop-up uh, menu gives us a choice of here of having the before image on the left and the after image on the right hand side and just rotate through these so we can see different views of the before and after like so we'll go back to the single view at the top we can also just click on the far right icon which looks like three sliders if we just click on that it takes our image right back to the start so we can see what it's like as the starting image press it again takes us back to what the retouching is. So that's uh, previews of before and after in Lightroom and in Camera Raw. Let's just go back into Photoshop because there's just one extra little thing that I want to show you. Now, there might be times when you're working in Photoshop that you want to maybe compare a few images to each other because every time we open up an image in Photoshop, we get it open as different tabs in the actual uh, work area. So you might want to compare a few images. You might actually want to do a before and after to see what effect the retouching you've had on your pictures is doing as well and compare it side by side. And we can do that in Photoshop. So let's just show you how I would maybe do it uh, on this image here. So the first thing I want to do, we need to have two copies of it. So I'm going to go to image and duplicate and it's just going to give it a name here just the same as the one we've got but just with the word copy at the end we'll leave it at that and click OK now this image I think I'll take back to the starting out of camera stage so I'll double click on the thumbnail to go back to camera raw and then click on that icon in the bottom right hand corner just to reset everything to zero and click OK so that it then sends that back into Photoshop. So now in one tab, we've got the start image and in another tab, we've got the finished image. So what I want to do is compare these images uh, so I can see them quite visually on the screen at the same time to see the before and after. So if I can go to the window menu here, choose a range and then we've got a number of options to see how we view them. So let's just say that I want to have uh, the before image on the top and the after image on the bottom. I'm going to choose two up horizontal and you'll see that the image I've got on screen at the moment is the before image. So when I click on that, it's going to be put in the before image at the top. Now, what happens if I want to compare certain areas of the picture. While I'm looking at this top image here, I can click on it and move it around. I can always also zoom in and, and move it around as well. But then if I wanna do that on the bottom image to compare areas, I've gotta click on it. I've gotta kinda of try and zoom to the same area and I've gotta kinda of drag it around to try and find exactly the same place. And that can be quite tedious and quite challenging sometimes depending on what pitch you're working. However, Photoshop can do it for you. When you've got two images like this, you've got, I've zoomed in on the top one, I want the bottom one to be in exactly the same place. All I need to do is go to the window menu, arrange, and then down here at the, the sort of like the bottom third of this uh, menu here, we've got match zoom, match location, match rotation, or match all. So obviously the match zoom would zoom both images to the same amount, location would drag it to the same point, and if we rotated them, it would also rotate both of them to the same angle. But rather than me clicking on each one, I'm just gonna click on match all, and you'll see that both images now are at the same point. And it's a great way of seeing with this picture here, at the top, what the original shadow area looked like, and at the bottom, what the actual shadow area looks like now we've brightened it up. So let's just click on the top image, drag across now. Let's have a look at these sunbeams and zoom out just a little bit. Let's see what that looks like on the bottom image, the exact same place. I'll go to Window, Arrange, whoops, Window, Arrange, and then Match All and you'll see that bottom image snaps into place, the exact same zoom and the exact same location. So it's very quick, very easy for me to actually see it as it was. And let's just go back to normal view. I'll click on the bottom image, window, arrange, and I'll just consolidate all to tabs. And we can go from there. So now we've got them both back as individual tabs at the top of the screen. So there you go, a very, very quick retouch showing how you can take an image that was probably a throwaway image and literally under a minute transform it and then just a few other little tips at the end just to sort of build up the video so you're not sat there just for one minute.
Now I'm no landscape photographer, as you can probably tell, and for those of you who followed my work, doing this kind of stuff isn't generally what I do. These are images purely from days out and from holidays, and it's great fun just retouching them. I'm having a lot of fun working in Lightroom at the moment, just playing around with sliders, and what I really love is how just one slider, like the temperature slider, can completely transform your pictures. So if anything, my advice to you is, get your images into Lightroom, throw nothing away for starters, have a look at some of your old pictures and just play and see what you come up with. But that's all I've got for you this week, it's a real quick ending for you, but you know the score, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already, share it with others and I'll see you next time.